Hello, welcome to a new episode of the Seriously in Business podcast. I am so, so thrilled that you're here because today we're talking about more specifically personal brands and how much of yourself to put into your personal brand, whether that should be a lot or a little bit, and then how to decide which parts of yourself to put into your personal brand. So I'm going to show you a few questions to ask yourself, a few things to consider and to think about before you actually embed yourself into your brand, because doing that has a lot of benefits, which I'll also chat about too. So hi, if we haven't met before, my name is Jackie and I'm a graphic designer and brand expert that loves to teach business owners how they can do their own branding themselves or if they don't want to do that, I have a studio that helps do that for people. But the essence that you really need to know as a business owner is actually thinking through these things for yourself so you actually have a strategy. Whether you are DIYing your brand or you are hiring a designer to do something for you, you need to know your strategy of how much of myself needs to go into a brand. And so by personal brand, what I mean, if you're unsure of that, is a business, you're the main person in that business. Like you're the, the main person performing the product or cr- performing the product, performing the service or creating the product. Like you're like the, you, you may or may not be the solo person. For example, I have a team of contractors that work for me, yet I'm still a personal brand because it's still mainly me that you work with. You work with my studio, you work with my team, but it's still me as the face and the advertiser and marketer of that business. And so it's still a personal brand. Whereas if you're a larger business or you don't have, your, your face isn't kind of like, people don't know who runs the business, then you're, you're less of a personal brand. But for those of you who do have a personal brand, which is a lot of us, especially us small business owners, then embedding yourself into the brand is a good thing. Creating a personal brand is really, really great because it means you're creating something that's relatable and connecting for your audience to, 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 to form a connection, to form trust with. You don't have to have a personal brand to succeed. You don't have to embed yourself into your brand to succeed. However, I do think it's a great tool and one that if you feel comfortable using is an incredible way to build trust really, really quickly. If you think about it, big brands like Coke or Apple or Starbucks or like Nike, like all these big brands, we trust them because they've got that long-term track record that we can see. We can see for however many years all these businesses have been around that they've performed what they've said they're going to do. They've, they've, they've created great shoes or they've created great laptops. They've created great coffee, whatever it is. And we can see that. We can see the thousands of people that have worked with them. And between all of that past rapport, between that us purchasing in the past, between us seeing all the success and how other, how many other people like that program or the product or the service, that helps us to see that credibility of that brand and helps us to want to purchase from them. It means we're in our heads like, okay, cool. They've got this, this, and this. That means that I can trust them and I can give them my money. You're not actually thinking that stuff as like a little checklist in your mind, but as a human being and as a consumer, we are always working out if a business or a person is trustworthy and worthy of us giving our hard-earned money to. And so as a small business or a newer business, we don't usually have that ginormous long track record or that huge customer base of that or that huge list of people that already trust us. We need to kind of start from the bottom. And another great way to build trust that isn't that long list of successes is to build out, bring ourselves into it because people can get to know us. And so many times when people feel like they know someone, then they trust them. We don't know that's always a good thing for debate, but in essence, we, when we feel like we get to know someone, we feel like we can trust them. And so as a small business owner, embedding yourself into the the brand is a really great tool to build that trust. So it's actually okay to put yourself into the brand. The hard thing I find my students always struggle with as I'm teaching them how to design their own brands or I'm helping them in the studio decide how much of myself should I put into the brand is how much of you as a human being and your likes and dislikes and things like that should be embedded into the brand. And that's the question I want to tackle in today's episode. So firstly, I just want to give you permission. You don't have to put all of yourself into your business. For example, there are things about my life that you guys don't know as people listening or watching me. You don't, you don't know all the little quirks that I have. You don't know where I live. You don't know the people that I hang out with outside of work, but you do know a lot of different things. You know, you might know that I have a kid. You might know, or two kids. You might know that I have a purple office. That's not really purple. It's just purple lights. <laughs> you might know that I really like cheesecake because there are certain things that I do reveal about myself. And also just for those of you who've seen me, I always wear purple clothes, but I don't just have purple clothes in my wardrobe. I have a whole plethora of clothes. You just see the purple ones. And so as a, as a person, you don't have to feel like you have to put everything that you love into your business. So many people, when they start to design their brand, they're like, oh, but I love purple and green and pink and yellow. And I really love art and I really love watercolor and I really love animals and I really love this and that and that. You don't have to put all that in your brand. It doesn't belong there because it's not all relevant. And so what I mean by all relevant is when you're actually crafting your brand, crafting your visuals, working out what what colors you want your color palette to be, what what fonts you want your fonts to look like and to be, and what you want your logo to look like, and all those different things about your brand and your business, it doesn't need to be just about everything that you love and putting everything in. What you want to do is work out what parts of ourselves and that we love are one related to our business and two connect with our audience. 
Because if you're, if say for example, my business brand would look totally different if I was targeting middle-aged men as my ideal clientele. I wouldn't probably do the purples and the pinks and the bubbles and the clouds. As much as some middle-aged men might like that, majority are probably not going to be naturally drawn to that. And so it's not, it's not a, probably a good decision for me to use that part of myself. But for example, I also love the color mustard and I really love being outdoors. And so maybe I use the outdoors and mustard as part of my branding if I was going to target that kind of demographic instead of what I've chosen, because what I've chosen is actually what att- attracts my cu- current ideal client, which is usually women in business, kind of that have a tiny bit of a creative flair, but aren't sure how to use it. Those are my peeps. Hi, if you're not one of those, you're totally welcome here anyway. I was even talking talking to a, a client today who found me on YouTube and then she ended up joining my program. I have a DIY course that teaches people how to create their own brand and graphics. And so she joined that because one of the reasons was she 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 felt just so connected with my brand and my business. When she saw my brand, she was like, oh, I almost want that for myself. Like this is just totally what I love and what I am. And that's because I've created a brand that targets and attracts my ideal audience. And so what you want to think through is what parts of me resonate with my audience. You don't have to put all of you in, but finding those parts and the relevant things will be really helpful for you. And sometimes you might not know these and you're going to have to guess. Guessing is okay. Guessing helps us get somewhere. Or you can even ask your audience. If you've worked with people in the past or you've got ideal clients, you're like, I'd love to work with you one day. Ask them for a chat, email them or message them on Instagram or catch up with them for a coffee if you're in if you're in proximity and just pick their brain around what kind of stuff they enjoy or what kind of things that you have in common. What things do you have in common with your audience? Lean into that for your branding. You don't have to put everything in, but lean into that. Uh, and so that's the first thing to ask is, is what parts of me do I have in common with my audience and how how can I use those parts of myself in my brand rather than feeling like I have to do everything? Because doing all parts of myself would not create a cohesive brand. If I was to do my outdoorsy side and my mustard loving side, it would clash a little bit with the creative and purpley pinky side of my business that the kind of like really cutesy things. As a human being, I'm allowed to be multidimensional and have parts of me represented in so many different facets. But as a business, we want to be more clear. We don't want to be foggy and be too much for people in terms of like too many different things that people can't work out what we actually are. We want to be something that people can read and understand and be like, all right, this business is for me or this business isn't for me. We don't want to work with everyone. Hear that. We do not We do not want to work with everyone. What you have to offer will not help everyone. The way that you work will not work well with everyone. And so working out who you want to work with and targeting them is a good thing. So I have this Venn diagram that's got three different parts to it. It's got three circles and in the middle is an overlapping section. The overlapping section in the middle is what your business's perfect brand is. And so like I just spoke about with your audience, there is actually three things to think about. One is your audience, so your who. So in this Venn diagram, there is W-O-W. So that spells out wow. So the first W stands for your who. The second W stands for your originality, which is what we've also spoken about with your who you are and what you love, like purples and, and outdoors and and the cutesy things, like whatever you're, 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 like, who are you? And like listing all of those things out. And the third circle is your why. So why does your business exist? Like why, what, what are its values? How are people trying to connect with you on that? And what do you kind of stand for? And so when you kind of combine those three areas, you'll notice that, that the, each part is quite different. The why section is going to have different content, different things in it than what your, your originality section will have, which will be different to your who section. So that's why we want to actually think about that Venn diagram idea of where is the overlap? What overlaps between your why and your who and your originality? Is there a certain vibe or a color or for example, my why would be I want people to feel like really uh, creative and I want them to feel inspired and I want them to feel equipped and I want them to feel nurtured. And so what parts of of myself and what parts of my of, of what my audience love can also kind of go into that, that creative kind of vibe. That's one of the reasons I've chosen purple because it's more of a, it's a really inspiring, playful, creative kind of color. And so having that, have, knowing what those three circles are and what are different things that we stand for and who we are and who our audience is will help us work out which parts of our originality of us we actually want to draw in and which parts don't actually overlap in any of those sections, which parts aren't important, which parts don't actually matter. And so that's a really great thing to ask, ask yourself too is what parts of myself do I want people to feel? Like what parts of me are relevant with what, what what I want my business to come across as, what what vibes I want my business to have. And is there parts of me that I can to, can bring into that? Because if I, I also love wearing black, I love like sometimes after I've done a full day of work wearing all purple, I'll go and get changed into a gray top and dark pants because I'm just like, that was just so much color and I'm just done from being colorful for today. But that black side of me doesn't technically overlap with what I want people to feel like. I want people to feel more, I want my business to be more playful and fun and exciting. But having that full black look would probably be more of a minimal kind of subdued kind of style. And so I don't push into that side of me. And so thinking through those things of, of, of what parts of myself are actually relevant to my business and using those instead. Oh, hello, 
I'm interrupting this episode super quickly to let you know that we have limited availability to work with the team at White Deer Studio. If you want a done for you graphic or brand support, that means doing your graphics for you, anything from bespoke social media templates to launch graphics or a full branding package, our team are ready to support you. Just head to whitedeer.com.au forward slash design studio to find out more. That's the color white, the animal deer.com.au forward slash design studio to find out more. We cannot wait to work with you. All right, back to the episode. And the last thing I want you to think about is how how professional does your business need to be? For example, I have quite, I guess, on the scale of like corporate to, to playful, my brand is definitely more on the playful side than it is on the corporate side. But other businesses, for example, they might need a slightly more corporate looking brand. If you are maybe a HR expert for accountant firms, maybe you want to have a slightly more corporate brand, even if as a person you feel like you're quite playful and silly. And so working out what does my audience need? What does my business need in terms of its professional? professionalism. <laughs> That's definitely a word, professionalism. How, what, 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 what does my business need in order to actually work in my industry? Some industries, we can be a bit more playful and we can have a bit more freedom in the way that we express ourselves. But that isn't always the case. As much as I push that you can actually have a pl- playful brand, that doesn't mean that's always the right answer for you. Maybe your business needs a more corporate looking brand. Maybe it needs to be more stripped back. Maybe people aren't going to take you seriously if you are having a purple, like one time I, like my main clientele is probably women in online business. Business. But every now and then I get a different kind of client. And I recently was working with a doctor's clinic and they would kind of always pick on me a little bit when I came into the office wearing like purple. We had a call and they'd see my background. They're like, whoa, that's hectic. Or they'd, they'd see my email signature and like, why is there a cloud on there? And so I don't know if they didn't actually say that last one. But it's kind of like if, 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 if I was trying to target all doctor's clinics, I would probably have a different brand than what I have now. But the fact is my main audience, my main niche isn't doctor's clinics. And so the brand that I have works, but thinking through who are the kind of people I want to attract and what kind of business do I need to be to succeed? If that needs to be slightly more professional, knowing that you might not be able to Im- to embed that kind of crazy, silly, playful side of yourself, but you might be able to embed a slightly different side of yourself and kind of edge in some of that playfulness. You just, you don't have to be like totally black and white and plain. You can still put that into the brand, your interesting parts into the brand, but that doesn't mean that you always should push them as heavily as you might if you had a slightly different business with a slightly different class. Clientele. So also taking that into consideration logically too and thinking, what does my audience need? And sometimes you can really own it. Sometimes you can really own like, actually, no, I am working with doctor's clinics, but I'm going to really own the playful brand because there are really playful doctor's clinics that want to work with me. And you might be able to find that niche. But if that's not the niche you're looking for, then maybe considering, can I just turn this down a little bit in order that it still represents me and I feel like I'm a part of my business, but in a way that it's not going to deter the people that you really do need to work with. And so that's, I guess, a little bit of a less fun point, but it is practically as as, 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 as the designer of your business, you need to think these things through practically because unless you're like a really, again, if you're like a Coke or a Apple or a Starbucks, you can start to be a bit more playful with your brand to some extent because you've got that client base already built up. But when you're first, you're, you're first starting out, you don't want to be too much for something unless your audience is ready for that too much. If your audience is so ready for that, go hard into it, go hard into the really playful look. But if your audience does need and does expect and does want and only wants a more corporate looking brand, put yourself into the brand, but do it in a way that's a little bit more intentional and maybe a little bit more subdued. And so I hope that makes sense. There's some really great benefits to having a personal brand and embedding yourself into the business, but you do need to make sure that you're doing that in the right way, in a way that your audience will resonate with, in a way that they'll connect with, in a way that makes sense for the kind of vibe you want your business to have and the professionalism that it needs to carry. So I hope you found that one helpful. If you have, I would love you to leave a review on the podcast or if you're on Spotify, I always add in a little question for you to answer. I would love to know your thoughts on that. Or if you're on YouTube, please let me know which parts of yourself you want to embed into your brand as you create it. So thank you for listening and I will see you next week for another episode. Bye.